Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Magnetic Excursion Update Tuesday, October 14th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. A, D a G2 geomagnetic storm is forecast for the next two days as multiple coronal mass ejections are headed towards Earth. We also have massive snows headed to the Sierras in the next week. And good news in Pagosa, the river is dropping. Buckle up, buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. The police department issued urgent flood updates this morning. They closed schools as a sewer line broke across a major bridge, downtown Pagosa Springs. The secondary peak was higher than the first. It reached 12.8 feet which is in major flood stage. Several homes uh, were affected in our region, and the footage is epic. The good news is that it took most of the day, about 12 hours, but the river is now falling off. Still in major levels here, 5240 cubic feet per second is unprecedented, but much less than earlier today. Take a look at it at uh, 8,400 cubic feet per second. Holy macaroni. We're looking downstream from the main bridge in Pagosa Springs. The springs are on the left. Um, town parking is on the right. This is downtown it's be a Pagosa. Big Epic flows there, and thank you all. Did you save by switching your car insurance? Oh, you need to be quiet. Thank you all for supporting us over there on YouTube. And there's more flooding potential. We have a powerful atmospheric river uh, pounding LA with flooding forces and river rescues. Holy macaroni. A rare and potent storm system hit LA on Tuesday morning, triggering evacuation warnings and burn scars due to the risk of debris flows. Now, we got... 10 inches over the last three days, but 1.5 inches of rain expected in the valleys could bring dangerous mudslides. Four inches in the mountains and the foothills as well. As an atmospheric river hit LA in the early hours of Tuesday, bringing scattered downpours, powerful winds and fears of flooding, and even some tornado warnings on the central coast, evacuation orders were issued in areas ravaged by January's firestorm, including the burn scars of the Palisades, the Eaton Fire, and Altadena, the Hearst Fire in Sinmar, and the Sunset Fire in the Hollywood Hills, which are at high risk of debris flows. A man was taken to the hospital for mild cold exposure, but I haven't seen many detailed reports on anything substantial from the L.A. region. The nor'easter that has trashed the northeast for the last several days slowly moves away, but the skies will clear tomorrow. Uh, Massachusetts nor'easter town by town listing. Take a look at this. Uh, total rain, Kingston 7 inches, Hall 6.19, Duxbury 6. So they had a few areas with some extreme rain totals. And at least three dead as days long nor'easter brings the final surge of coastal flooding to New Jersey. You can see those coastal towns being inundated. This is pretty normal activity for, for Jersey. I mean, I grew up in Philly and spent tons of time on the Jersey coast. Coastal flooding and wind whip rain hit the mid-Atlantic and the northeast Monday and Tuesday with an impactful nor'easter. At least three dead have been reported over the last several days as rain and, and wind impact the region. Bad news there. More bad news, or good news if you're a skier. Snow brains forecast two plus feet for California just this week. And heavy totals in Palisades, Tahoe, Mount Rose, Heavenly, Kirkwood, Bear Valley, Dodge Ridge, and Mammoth. Buckle up, Buttercup. Winter is getting started early. And now the full forecast. A storm moving from western into central U.S. through Wednesday. 
A storm system moving over the Rockies Wednesday will bring marginal risk for excessive rainfall and severe thunderstorms from parts of New Mexico into western South Dakota. Moderate sn snow is expected from northwestern Wyoming into southern Montana as well. You can see winter storm warnings for the high altitude regions of Wyoming and freeze warnings and watches up in the Pacific Northwest. Winter storm watches and warnings for the Sierras, including Tahoe. And there are the models. It's snowing right now. Heavy Sierra cement currently, and that will continue for the next six hours. And it will end tomorrow as more moisture and snow moves in the northern Rockies here. Take a look at this model. I'm going to move it through. We've got a huge system here moving through the week uh, at the end of the week here. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, an east coast storm. And then at the end of the model, this major hurricane moves across Cuba and up into the East Coast here and looks completely insane. The good news is that our hurricane season is one of the weakest ever recorded in recent memory. A quick look at total accumulated precipitation to see if we have any more flooding threat here in our region. Not much. That's good news there. Nothing in the pink. And, but we may have some flooding threats for North Texas here through the end of October, as well as the Pacific Northwest. A quick look for total snowfall, and well, it's looking epic, and yeah, the ski resorts will open in October. There are the numbers, and thank you, GFS Model. An ancient fault in New York awakens today with a rare earthquake, and that occurs um, just at the Northern New York State line, a 2.6 magnitude on Monday, 11.40 p.m. Eastern time, just outside Chazzy, 25 miles south of Montreal, at a shallow depth of five miles was felt by many. And you can see the quake here on the map, just a tiny little pinprick, but a rare one indeed, as an ancient fault in New York awakens. The quake occurred far from any tectonic plate boundary deep within the North American plate, making it a rare intraplate earthquake. Tremors like this are uncommon in the northeastern U.S., where ancient faults only occasionally release built-up stress. And this could, in fact, be an aftershock, can you believe it, from the New Madrid earthquake a very long time ago. AI reveals a hidden ring fault that is unleashing earthquakes at Italy's Campi Falegri volcano. New AI tools are revealing that Campi Falegri experienced more than 54,000 earthquakes between 2022 and 2025. By mapping these events, researchers have discovered a huge, crisp, ring-shaped fault. Take a look at it. Absolutely astounding. The distinct ring fault can be seen here based on earthquakes that occurred in just the last three years. Does it mean that Campi Falegri is about to erupt in a spectacular way. Well, not really, but since 2022, the number of earthquakes have increased exponentially at Campi Falegri. And we can see here in the last week, a small uptick in those minor tremblers as well. Here is the 14-day period. Here is the last 30 days. And maybe we can see a trend upward in the last month. But if we look at the yearly data, there doesn't really seem to be a trend. There is a little uptick this month, maybe three months ago, maybe a year ago, but nothing is really imminent at Campi Falegri. Seismic update, no quakes of note. Well, we got that rare rumbler up in Chazzy, New York 2.6. Overall, low level activity. We have some concentrated activity out here in Chile with a 5.2 as the top rumbler there. But overall, low-level activity worldwide. Huge list of ongoing volcanic eruptions today. Worldwide Volcano News. Fuego, the first on the list, ongoing volcanic ash. We've got Semadu on the list erupting today as well. Kluchiskioi to 20,000 feet. Nevado de Ruiz, possible volcanic ash. Popo to 19,000 feet. Raventador volcanic ash continues. Semadu, who knew, now you do. Volcanic emissions were reported. Liwa to 9,000 feet. Sangay volcanic ash emitted. Ibu to 7,000. Planchon Petaroa, a, vol 
volcanic ash was reported. Fuego, volcanic ash as well. Popo to 20,000 feet. Liwa Tobi, a high level eruption to 45,000 feet today. I'm sure we're going to get some good footage on that coming soon. Major eruption. Vesta Manyanyar, volcano. Have no idea about that, but a new one on the list. Kluchiskyoy on the list as well. Reventador, uh, volcanic ash likely. Take a look at Liwa Tobi, Laki Laki, the 45,000 foot blast with billowing ash column and lava fountains. There we go. And then Vista Mayor, Iceland, volcanic ash advisory. Is that true? Is that really true? We'll have to double check that. Take a look at this. Volcano, 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 volcano in the islands of Italy. Strong degassing. Oh my God, what's going on there? Semadu, who knew? 14,000 foot blast. Ibu to 7,000 feet, Can Leon to 9. And wrapping up the list is Liwa to 18,000 foot. So we've got to get to the bottom of this eruption, which is quite significant. 45,000 foot. A very high eruptive activity at the volcano has been continuing tonight and is still ongoing at the time of this update. An impressive and violent lava fountaining episode, Paroxysm, is now in progress at the volcano's crater. So, more tomorrow. Buckle up, buttercup. Things are heating up. Aurora alert for coronal mass ejections are racing towards Earth and could spark impressive northern lights in just two days. Quick look at the WSA Enlil Spiral, and you can see those CMEs emerging. One, two, three, four, and cannibalizing each other. All of them are quite weak, just small little, small little buggers. And the peak of them will reach us overnight 16th to the 17th. And that brings us to space weather news for the 14th of October. The detailed forecast is showing G2 geomagnetic storm uh, maybe in the next 24 hours. So we'll keep a close eye on that. And we also have an uptick in flaring and some more impulsive M flares today. KP is low. And the multiple incoming CMEs are possible. Holy macaroni. Well, what we actually know is that right now, if you look up to the northwest, Comet Lemon is becoming visible to the naked eye. Here are the positions. Tonight is the 14th. Just down and left of the Big Dipper, if you look northwest, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, each day it will rise higher on the horizon, making it more visible, and it may also be brightening. So get out and look up at Comet Lemon. Subsurface scanning at Gobegli Tepe detects structures at the world's oldest cult center. Well, it's actually an archaeoastronomical center, but call it cult, if you will, in San Lurfa, Turkey. They are investigating. Many people on the internet claim they're not doing any work here, but that's far from the truth. That's just for clicks. Investigations of the eastern and southern slopes of the mound out uh, at southeastern Turkey's site of Gobegli Tepe with ground-penetrating radar has revealed additional circular monumental structures, which we already knew about, large buildings as well, and smaller structures that may have been used as domestic buildings at the site. So now it is an occupational site, according to Turkey today. Things are being revealed. Just like this discovery this week. A 4,000-year-old human skull found along a riverbank in Fayette County. Human remains discovered along the riverbank have been determined to be more than 4,200 years old, the local coroner announced Monday. Remains, which included portions of a human skull, were reported found on June 2nd on the bank of the Whitewater River. The discovery was then passed on to Fayette County Sheriff's Department, where detectives launched an investigation and after rounds of study and preliminary analysis, including radiocarbon dating, it has been confirmed the skull is 4,270 years old. Holy macaroni. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.